Okay, so I've set myself a challenge today and I'm going to do this live coding as quickly as possible. What we're going to do today is implement our hashing of the keys uh, for our database storage uh, within our uh, application. As you remember from last time, we wrote this code at the, uh, uh, at the end, which was um, using a uh, unordered map in order to uh, implement our key value store. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, so I'm going to close this down and I'm going to open up um, our database file. I've written in um, points that we're going to implement. So first of all, we're going to implement an in memory map. Um, we then need to load all keys from disk when we first start our database, if there's already a database there. We could, when we close this database, flush the contents to disk, but I'm going to do that on each write. Um, just, to sh just so that in a future lesson we can talk about memory versus disk backed memory. Um, I'm also going to make sure that when we destroy the database we actually empty the in memory hash as well. And then further down um, we're going to actually write when we set value to our in memory map. And then the read we're going to totally change. So instead of reading from disk each time we're going to read um, from in memory only. So that's going to make it blindingly fast. Then I've got a whole bunch of questions um, for kind of later on as well. Incidentally, these questions, um, I've been embedding some of them quite obviously in the C++, but there's also some hidden Easter eggs kicking about. If you're interested, have a read through the files, make sure you check the entire file out. There are hidden questions and answers in there for people who want to really delve down into the detail. Um, but today I'm gonna to skip past that and implement this ridiculously quickly. So the first thing we need to do is add our in-memory map here. Um, so I'll get rid of that and that's our map, I'm going to call that member, and I'm going to call this our key value store. Okay. Um, now, it's not found unordered map there because I need to pull it in. So, we has to include unordered map. There we go. Um, and that's now successfully found it. So, that's that bit done. I need to now load all my keys for disks, which are basically load any files with KV uh, in them, or in their name, more accurately. Um, so how do we do that? Well, you'll probably recall from before in our tests, way back in the first one, we had this bunch of stuff here where we were making sure the directory existed. So we have this concept of um, a directory iterator. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal that code, because, you know, all the best people steal stuff. Um, and I'm going to put it in our database implementation. Incidentally, one other thing I'm going to do today is these headers... Because this is now, we implemented the pimple idiom last time, we shouldn't need to change any headers to add this functionality. We're changing how things work on the background. So even though we're adding members and all this kind of thing, we shouldn't touch any header files. So I'm going to specifically close that folder down. Okay. So this proves that the pimple idiom means you don't change any header files for your clients. Um, so, okay, I'm going to steal this code here. So uh, db get directory is actually um, basically get directory because already in that folder yeah so we've now got that but we need to iterate over that and um, make sure that we've got the element we want um, now how do we do that how does directory iterator work well as luck would have it um, yeah, unordered map we've pulled in here I've also got our directory iterator here so this is our directory iterator this is what you get back when you call um, this method here on a particular folder. Um, its value that comes back if it's not empty is of type directory entry. So this is kind of hard to read, but if you remember that what you get back is the value type, it's either the same as end if there's no values left, or it's this type. So if we click on that and see what members functions we get, for a directory entry, it's only that one level down, it's not recursive. But we get a whole bunch of things here. So we get to see, does it exist, first of all? Is it a regular file? Um, and they're both quite useful things, yeah? Um, and then with that, what we also get, we also get this path function. Now, if we click on that, that returns a file system directory path. Yeah. Now, interestingly, if we have a look at that type and scroll down, we see that one of the many many functions it has is extension and if we click on that we get an example of pulling out extension so this enables us to do what everything we needed to do so i'm going to go for um for auto uh, p 
in there. Uh, ooh, what's there? Oh, yeah, turns out I don't know how to write code. Oh, there you go. That's interesting. I didn't know I did that. Um, oops. So what we want to do now is we've got that. So we want to go um, if uh, p dot exists, pretty obvious one, and p dot is a regular file. Um, then we need to open it. Yep. So therefore, uh, open the file. Uh, actually, no, no, we don't. Um, check if extension is dot kv. And then, if so, open file. Yep. So here we're going to do um, if dot kv is equal to p dot path dot extension. Then do something magical. And I could put that on the same line, but it's just a bit easier to read because uh, we go there straight off the path, whereas this goes to path dot path. Bit more easy to read. Uh, if so, open the file. Okay. Well, in that case, um, I'm going to do. Uh, we scrolly scrolly down here. Do, 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 do. We can steal this code from elsewhere. So get value is basically this. This is how you get a value. Yep. Do, 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 do. Um, so this is a bit different now. So what we want to do is we want to open that entire uh, path name, which is pretty straightforward. So it's just p dot uh, path will give you the full thing. And then we're pulling the value out and that gives us a string value and the key as well. So the key actually is the, is the file name before the underscore. So what we want to do is um, do p dot path dot uh, and I always forget this actually, so let's go back to here. So as well as extension, I can also do the file name path component, which will give you the just the end of it, which is not what I want. Oh, is it what I want? That is what I want, isn't it? So it's the file name within that folder, basically what you get, not the full path, and yeah, that is what I want. So, so path dot file name. Yep, that will be um, the key with this. Now, what I want to do is I want to substring that. Um, so, what options do we have? String split actually. Ah. So going to string. That is all I want. What I want to do. Standard basic string. And I want to find the first position of the underscore character. Basically. Um, uh, well, I can just do substring because I know what the size of it is. So I'm going to assume that everything's strings for now. It's obviously a very dangerous assumption. Assumption always ends with underscore string dot kv. Yep. So what we need to do now is standard string key equals key with string dot substra. And then that takes the position, which is zero, and then the size, which is key with string dot length minus, um, so six, a at 10, yep. I mean, this is dangerous. Don't do this at home, children. 
because you're just assuming that that's always going to be the case and that's really bad now i happen to know we're fine with it um but that's not the point <laughs> you shouldn't write code with that i mean we've got plenty of checks here but still we've not checked that underscore string is there if we change the code in future to what integers and we forget this line it's going to blow up in our face right um so you just need to be aware of that so we've now got the key we'll have at the end of this we'll have the value which means now what we need to do is we need to populate our unordered map with the value so m underscore key store dot insert and then we can do our key value there just like we did in our tests and that um is now implemented so it looks a bit hairy but actually it's pretty straightforward yep and that compiles so it must run the first time so it'd be fine we're not going to check it what could possibly go wrong okay so we've done that so um we've created our inst uh, our member variable we've populated it when we load the database up uh, what we now need to do is empty this map here um if we that's pretty trivial so we're going to do um m underscore Do, 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 what do I call it? And so key value so there we go, that's weird. Dot and then we can do clear and that will absolutely eradicate everything in it. Um now we've done that. Question four here is okay, this is where we set a key value. So we've just done the code for this up here, so we can be very naughty and do copy paste. Do a little good copy paste. Uh so yeah, also write to our in memory map. Which is an unordered map. Unordered, unordered too. Um, so we're doing that key value, key value. Yep, yeah, correct. Naming conventions help you. Uh, some questions there for homework if you're interested. So we've done that now. Um, now here though, get key value because when we're loading the database up, we're reading everything from the file, and when we're writing, we're also writing to the in-memory map. We don't any longer have to. Um, you know read from a file because it's always in memory now I'm commenting this out because in a future lesson I'm going to come back and steal that code and do something else with it so normally I just rip it out because it's in source control but I'm not going to do that so what I want to do now is I want to um, do a uh, auto uh, reference to the value is m underscore key value store Oop. That's not an equal sign, is it, Adam? Uh, dot find. And this is going to be the key we're interested in, which, funny enough, is called key. And now, what we need to do is, like, uh, oh yeah, const. Because we're not, not changeable. Okay, so what we need to do now is make sure that that's actually got a value. Now, if they provide a key that's rubbish, at the moment we've got no code in here whatsoever, like this would have blown up massively if we'd have provided a, a name of a key that didn't work and we saw that in one of the previous videos when we were using smileys and things. <coughs> but what we want to do here is um, handle that and then we're going to handle it in a very naughty way. So uh, if, um, I always forget what the end thing is here. Uh, the, Dots. I must forget this. Me and iterators do not get on. P equals NP. Yeah, there we go. I always forget the syntax. If V is equal to end V, then, uh oh, I'm going to return an empty string. Danger! Should be not found really so we're going to add error handling uh, so to do error handling in future yeah um otherwise we're just going to return the thing that's at the other end of v yeah um which is not how you do it there uh, do, 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 turn v dot uh, and it's the yeah so you're doing get me the key, the key is the first one, value is the second one, so turn v dot second. Okay, maybe it's v dot second. Okay, maybe it's v dot something, what the hell? Ah, 
No, it's not dot. Yeah. And oh dear me, not my day today. Find, find, find. Ah, there we go. There we go, we got there eventually. So uh, if V is equal to MQ value still at end, do you want to turn that, otherwise turn this, and we're commenting them out. But this will now be blindingly fast because it's only ever from our in-memory store, right? Um, at the bottom again, more things to look at, and that's the end of this particular thing. So theoretically, this should all compile and work for its time. What could possibly go wrong? Frankly, we've got a whole bunch of tests to test the underlying functionality, so we can use them as regression tests. Um, so... I think it's finished building, run it, computer says, woo, seven assertions and four tests. So let's just make sure that this actually works. So do we still have a database in here? So we've got my DB and it's got really long keys in. Okay, <clears throat> let's try this. So uh, I want to get the key pensive looking person um, so I want to get from the database name my DB the key which is hmm pensive guy yay so it still works so let's uh, make sure the set still works so set minus name my DB uh, minus key please work minus value it should work first time exclamation mark and then quote so that'll go in as one value yep so uh or not if i can't type properly no oh, there we go don't quite know why that didn't work i had a bang in there should work first time boom okay now if we go and get that which i think we called it please work yeah, should work first time. Brilliant. So it works brilliantly. Of course it does. I wrote it. Yeah, so that's it. So now what we've done is now got extremely fast hashing in there. You can't really see on the command line that it's, it's faster, but it is faster. <laughs> yeah. And if we look um, like a uh, less. Um, so yeah, we've still got the strings in there and it still works fine. So that was a you know, backward compatibility safe change. We've not altered any header files. We've not altered anything on disk. It's still working physically the same way. We've implemented hashing in memory. As we're spamming loads of uh, information into this database, um, what we'll be able to do now is pull it back uh, in a fast mechanism. So what we're going to do in the next thing is we're going to change the implementation here so that we can do more performance stuff. So at the moment, I can't really measure how the database is running. We're going to take some of the things we did from the sample application and implement them as a performance checks that can be run on a regular basis against everything we do. So we'll see what every little change will make to the performance of this database as we add more functionality, as we add tuning to it uh, on performance enhancements. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, it was a pretty quick one today. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll get back into it next time um, with some uh, kind of more C++ implementation and separating out uh, and measuring performance. Thanks. And don't forget, please do subscribe to the video. Uh, it absolutely helps with the followers. Thanks. Bye.